Hello, today I will be teaching you how to solve one of these from any scrambled permutation. Uh, you'll be able to use this skill to impress all your friends and everybody will love you because of it. But before I can teach you how to solve one, I have to teach you some terminology first. There are three essential parts to the cube. Um, first, there's edge pieces, which look like this and have two stickers on them. There's corners which look like this and have three stickers on them. And there's center pieces that look like these and have one sticker on them each. Now a common misconception is that in the Rubik's Cube you're trying to solve the stickers, but really what you're trying to solve is the pieces. So when, we, when a piece is solved, we say that it's between the two correct centers, which are determined by the two stickers on the piece. Or in the case of corners, a corner is solved when it is between the three correct centers, because corners have three stickers. Now, just to show you how a piece looks, I'm going to take my Rubik's Cube apart a little bit. And as you can see, this is an edge piece, and it has two stickers on it. And this is our corner, it has three. And as you disassemble the cube, you'll discover that there's a mechanism in here, a white piece that holds the cube together and it um, holds the centers in place and um, it's a fact that the centers never move because of this and actually because um, basically when you turn aside it doesn't move any of the centers so all the centers stay in place and what that tells us is what color each side will be when it's solved now, and I also have to explain to you some move notation because you won't be able to do anything if you don't know how to move the faces. So I'm going to use a move notation that's a little different than the standard notation because personally I find it confusing to use the clockwise, counterclockwise notation. So instead I'm going to teach you a notation that I call face direction. So um, there are six sides on the Rubik's Cube. And if you're holding the cube like this, this is the front face, this is the back face, this is the top, or U, this is the bottom, or down, D, this is right, and this is left. And when I tell you to move the right face up, it means you turn this part up, like this. When I say move the right face down, you do that. And the same goes for the left face. Left face up, left face down. For the top face, if I say you turn the top face to the right, it means you do this. You turn this front part to the right. If I tell you to move the top side to the left, you do that. And for the front side, when I tell you to turn the front side to the left, you turn this top part this way. If I say turn it to the right, you do that. And if I say turn a face twice, means you do that, and you can actually do it in any either direction, as it both does the same thing. And in the commentary, I'll be listing the algorithms in this notation, and um, each face turn will consist of a pair of letters. Well, the first letter will be the face to turn, and the second letter will be the direction to turn it in. So if you see RU, that means turn the right side up. And if you see UL, it means to turn the top side, the upside, to the left. Lastly, I want to explain the basic um, design of the method that I'm going to teach you. Um, this is an edges first method, which is very different from the standard beginner's method, which solves the cube layer by layer. Instead, we're going to solve all of these pieces first, and then we're going to solve the corners. And um, the first step of this method is a little difficult to grasp at first, but after you uh, practice a lot, it will become very easy for you to do. However, the benefit of this method is that you have to memorize only two move sequences. Compare this to the five move sequences with the standard beginner method. The first step of this method is to condition all of the edge pieces so that you can solve them without turning the blue or the green face.
Now, um, believe it or not, there are certain pieces on the cube where no matter how many times you turn the outer faces, the ones that aren't blue or green, you just can't solve them. So for instance, this blue and orange piece, um, it's between the blue and orange centers, but it's not flipped the correct way. And we cannot solve it without turning the top or bottom, the blue or green faces. So um, if I turn the blue face, now I can solve this piece correctly um, by only turning the outer faces. So for the duration of this step, I want you to hold the blue center on top and the green center on bottom. And unless I tell you specifically t to turn the top or bottom, the blue or green sides, you should not do so because if you do, then you'll create edges that cannot be solved without turning those faces. These are called bad edges. An edge which cannot be solved without turning the blue or green face is called a bad edge. If it can, then it's called a good edge. However, if you have a different color scheme, um, then you should pick two arbitrary opposite center colors. So um, if you have like white and yellow, then you could use those two as your top and bottom. Um, and just substitute those two colors for blue and green if you have an alternate color scheme. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to find a piece and determine if it is bad or if we cannot solve it without turning the top or the bottom, which is blue and green face. Um, so we pick a piece, let's say this piece, for instance, and then what we want to do is we want to put it into the middle layer without turning the top or bottom. Now this is really easy. You can just turn the face that contains it a quarter turn in either direction, and then it becomes in the middle layer. So you could do this for this piece, or we could put it here, and either would work. And once it's in the middle layer, you can determine whether it's a good or bad edge. So I'm going to test this edge piece right here to see if it's good or bad. Now the first thing you want to do is, if there's a blue or green sticker on the edge piece, you want to ignore it. Just put your finger over it, pretend it doesn't exist. Okay? Then um, look at one of the stickers on it, which obviously not the blue or green one. We can only look at this sticker, okay? And what you do is you look at the center next to that sticker, and <clears throat> if the center color is the opposite color, or in this case it's red, orange is opposite red, or if they're the same color, so if it's like this, then we know the edge piece is good. We can solve this piece without turning the blue or green side. Okay, but however, if a piece is in the middle layer and it's non-blue or green sticker, does not match with the center next to it. So it's not the same color and it's not the opposite color because yellow is opposite white. Then this is a bad edge. We cannot solve this piece without turning the top or bottom. See it's in the correct location and it's flipped the wrong way. <clears throat> I'll show you another example. So uh, you'll first of all you should always remember that orange and red are opposite colors unless your cube is different, and white and yellow are opposite. I mean, white and yellow. So, um, this piece here, we can look at it in two ways and tell that it's good. So if we just look at these two stickers, we see that they're the same, that means they're good. And if we look at these two stickers, and we see that they're opposite colors, see, white is opposite yellow, we know this is good. So we know this is good in two different ways. Um, let's see, I'll take this one for example. It's in the top layer, we can't do anything with it until we put it into the middle layer. Okay, now we ignore this sticker because it's blue or green, and we look at these two stickers. These, the edge sticker and the center next to it. Now these are not the same color, and orange is not an opposite of white, because yellow is the opposite of white. So this is a bad edge. 